Hello, and welcome to Captured by Women. Captured by Women is an all-women host show that tackles trending issues that occur during the week from a women's perspective. I am Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel, and I'm joined today with my wonderful co-host, Nancy Teyaku, a development consultant. Nancy Vokania, an agribusiness development consultant and fashion stylist. On today's show, we will be tackling the 1,500 housing units at Saglemi, which rots away. We will also be discussing the ghost of Aisha Huang upon Ghana. We will be looking at why she was deported and why the senior minister, Yao Safumafo, made comments about her deportation to China. Finally, we'll be discussing the issue of sanitation in Ghana. Why the president's bold call for Accra to be the cleanest city in Africa has not yet been realized. We will be talking about all of this when we come back from the break on The Spin. Welcome back from the break. I'm Elizabeth Olympia Emanuel. The government of Ghana may well be on the brink of suffering another judgment debt as the contractor working on a 5,000 housing unit, housing project of Ghana, Constructora OAS, has written to terminate the contract with government and get compensation for losses suffered. The $200 million project, better known as the Saglemi Housing Project, was instituted by the Eswile government with 1,500 housing units inaugurated by the former President John Mahama in 2016. But Ministry of Works and Housing, Minister of Works and Housing Samuel Atachia, has suggested that the project's implementation was fraught with financial misappropriation and has called on the Attorney General and IOKO to investigate. Although $180 million, being 80% of the project cost, has been paid to the contractor, the buildings lack the requisite infrastructure and amenities such as water, electricity, interior fittings, windows, and decent drainage systems to make them inhabitable. Where did the money go? Government the world over is seen, is seen as a continuum and courts don't care much about which party is in power. So while we may be playing up our NBC versus NPP politics, this contractor could walk away with a nice judgment debt without mm -hmm. sweat. Mm -hmm. If we put up a weak defense, as we almost often always do, we will be losing this money as well. Why is this happening? I mean, before you start a project of that magnitude, magnitude, services, road mm. network, right. water, these are basic things that happen in engineering before you put up a house. There are modern ways today of building, prefab, fast construction, fast build, which I believe this company also in, implemented using mm. pre prefabricated pre forms. Yeah. You know you build fast using the system. So why, yeah. why were, who was monitoring the project? Because that is where the failure sets in. The company is building and the units are being put up. Where mm. is the road network? Basic infrastructure. Mm. And some of these are provided by government hand in hand, mm. especially when it's a housing project. It's a PPP project. Yeah. We are failing ourselves, really. I, I have two questions. I don't even know why he was paid 80% to construct a first phase. That's one thing. For 1,500 units. Yes, but this is a $200 million project. And he was paid 80% wow. of the money up front. I don't think I've seen that happen in any case. Normally, there's a first phase with the first tranche. And then there's a second phase and the second tranche. After inspection and right. certificates are signed. That's how it normally works. So that alone is a question mark. Secondly, what's gone round in the news cycles is the fact that the former minister in charge from the former government, you know, in place, cut down the number of houses, housing units to be constructed at his own discretion. This is what is alleged. 
you know, by many of, you know, the media houses. That alone, to me, is a complete violation of our legal system, of our legislative system, of our judiciary procedures. Yeah. That alone. Because I believe when a contract this magnitude is uh, awarded, yeah. it goes to Parliament for approval. Right. The ministry doesn't sign it uh, by uh, unilaterally. I think, it, I think fundamentally, we, 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 there's a flaw in the way the governance and transition of projects works. Our experience has been not too good. Yeah. And I would say that it's to the detriment of the country's development. If party A is in power mm -hmm. and there's a road, their house is being constructed, and for some reason, you are not giving the mandate to lead the country into the next mm -hmm. phase of tenure of governance. Party Z, party B, party whoever comes, is supposed to continue right. wherever yes. party A left or whichever off. party left off. Because you are coming to be government over every everybody else so whoever goes to stay there is a citizen of ghana that right. is the idealistic way we look at it mm. but there are always a lot of interest at play especially with contracts and reviewing contracts and reviewing them when you are there mm -hmm. uh, versus when you are not there mm. so i think at the minimum what we need to protect is the transitions when a government comes in why do projects have to be held hostage? Yeah. Projects that would benefit people, hospitals, roads, houses. Why do we have to suffer just because there's a new government right. and there's a confusion about how much was spent You're or how much was not right. spent? Okay, in right. this case, let's say the 80% was paid. Hmm. The number of units that should be given for 80% have not been constructed. No. What stops the current government from, from pursuing them to make sure that the number of units that should be produced oh, or yes. constructed with the money has to be, that's number one. Number two, yeah. those that have already been constructed, why are people not living in them? Why would they be left to them rot away when people actually need those things? Number three, why not engage the contractor? Yeah. If you want to terminate, then let's make sure that it is at a point where you don't lose money, money that might even be more if you are supposed to construct, yeah. than if you continue with the contractor. Yes. If, if, if the person constructing the place would earn more money from you mm -hmm. from terminating, what's the point? Why yeah. don't you just let the person go ahead and, and construct? So I think the conversation is not very clear. We are letting in, in this, this become case, a bit I think more it's the OAS complicated than it should be. Mm -hmm. Constructura that has written to terminate yes. their contract. Yes. There's no government that's terminating Yeah, but them. government hinted that they were terminated. That is the same media report. Mm. The same media report says, the minister says, we are terminating, we are going to terminate because there are some underhand dealings in what has transpired. But if you hear that, because I think the, the, the construction company sent in their, their letter like March 8th, but we started hearing all these things in February, yeah. much Which earlier is, yeah. in the year, you know. So we, we and the, the good news is that the, the committees that work in parliament are bipartisan committees. Yes. So this is a good one that we can that see can them tackle. work. It's bipartisan. Yes. Yeah, this one is not this party was there. That right. one, the, the committee, at the committee level, both parties Thank are yes. represented. So they should really come out with things so we can get yeah. this and not prolong yeah. In this uh, case, issue. I, I feel as if, I mean, cutting ties with this contractor will not be in the best interest of this country. And I, for one, would advocate for these houses that are completed. I mean, we've seen videos of, of the buildings. Yes, we've seen them. At I've least let's, been to let's, the let's, let's, let's get some sort of management involved, you know, and get people to occupy these houses on some sort of mortgage basis or some sort of arrangement that will work, you know, for people. Because already the housing benefits, right, is it? I think yes. so. I think and the, yeah, and the housing plan. deficit is not going anywhere. In actual fact, it's actually it's increasing. Rising. Yeah. The houses have been beautifully done. It's Infrastructure. They're quite needs nice inside. An, an assessment needs to be done as to how much is needed to complete it, to make it habitable, because the investment has already gone down the yeah. drain for $180 million. So yeah. let's take it as it is and complete those ones and get them lived in. It's exactly. 1,500 units. We need units. to get yeah. some, That's a some lot. things Let's going. stand our ground and get citizens need to demand but for some accountability. Apparently, it's um, been spent. some of the uh, sewage systems and so on are not in place, so they can't even be lived in at this time. Yeah, but then, then it's they not should, a big deal. They should deal. get on with it then. It's not they a big deal. It can be it. done. Yeah. Yeah. It can be done. So it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate.
Um, well, Saglemi. We need to get it fixed. <laughs> this is Saglemi housing project, and this is only one of many. Yeah. I, I hope we can make this the uh, the prime project that can be resolved, put our heads together by co partisan committee, like you mentioned, and get it inhabited, get it lived in. Yeah. We'll be right back from the break. In April 2017, President Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu made a promise to all Ghanaians to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. And in November 2017, he repeated this call when he launched the Every Day is a Sanitation Day. And that Sanitation Days should not just be one day in a month. Today, to discuss the situation of sanitation in Accra, and in Ghana, we have Dr. Benjamin Dentua Ofori with the Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, University of Ghana, Legon. Doc, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Our first question is whether the president really had been given an overview of the sanitation situation in the capital and in Ghana when he took office. That led to him making this bold promise? I think so, and very much so. Um, the president had traveled extensively, as he continues to do, and he knows the situation on the ground. He has vivid image of the sanitation condition in, our individual, uh, in the individual towns, in the communities, and all over all over the country. So I think he knew exactly what he was talking about. And you made a statement that the president said every day is a sanitation day. Yes, rightly so. Every day is a sanitation day because every day we generate waste. And the waste that we generate on daily basis ought to be managed. I don't know that we are going to find ourselves. Can you give us, as the experts in this, in this uh, studio, can you give us an overview of what the main challenges of sanitation are that we have to grapple with? Hmm. First and foremost, much has been said about attitudinal problems, the non-preparedness of the citizenry to do the right thing. I think everybody knows about this huge challenge that we continue to litter. There is also the challenge of not having adequate bins or, if you like, street bins. As people walk about, once they generate the waste, where should they place them? For example, if you buy a sachet of water and after drinking, where do you place it? Some individuals would obviously put the empty sachet or the bottles in their bags. But we also have a chunk of people who may not do... Just throw, just throw it out. They will just throw it away right. and continue to litter. We can also talk about the institutional challenge. That is the agencies which are supposed to manage the waste. They have the responsibility of, manage, of, uh, of managing the municipal waste they usually come up with their own mm. challenges, inadequate logistics, personnel, and so on and so forth. Then you also have the long distances over which the, the vehicles would have to travel to dump the waste in the landfill. That is also there. Mm. Then the landfills are also nearly filled up. So we have a challenge in that sector as well. Yeah. Then you talk about the whole issue of yeah. you know, finance and so on and so forth. There, yeah. It appears that supervision of, of these performance contracts with the waste management companies is also lacking in that respect because um, survey and analysis statistics that was done of last year's um, 
performance, we had a deputy head of waste management Mr. V at AMA, Mr. Victor Cote, given um, these last results, if I may. Please. The best, the highest ranking was Jakura Ventures with 80.5%, and they performed reasonably well because they have uh, actually been doing separation of waste in a lot of the agencies for the past few years, which the other waste management companies have not um, implemented as yet. We had Zoom Lion in Ayawaso Central with 61.8%, Zoom Lion again in Ablekuma Central, 61.5%, Metropolitan and Allied, Ablekuma Central, 43%. J. Stanley Owusu and Co. Okaikwe South, 40.7%. Metropolitan and Allied for Ablekuma South, 36%. Tropical Waste Ashiedu Keteke, 28.3%. Mesk World Limited Ashiedu Keteke, 22.1%. Who is monitoring these waste management companies? I guess you are talking about the players who are undertaking the door-to-door -door mm. service. Yes, and I would also ask the question, what's, what is it that Jakura Ventures is doing which is giving them the higher score? If I may, I was going to come up with yes. that. If, if, because we, we would like to know, what do these performance contracts entail? What exactly are they supposed to be doing? Are they supposed to be collecting waste? Are they supposed to be processing plastic and other you know, products? or waste materials that are recyclable, what do the contracts entail? What are they supposed to be doing as waste management companies contracted by the government to keep the city clean? I can't say much about the nature of the, of mm. the contracts, but we all know that at least they have been undertaking door-to-door -door mm. service. They have been offering door-to-door -door services. So what they are supposed to do is to be lifting the waste from the sources where the waste Mm -hmm. are generated. Mm -hmm. But I come back to the question that I pose. What is it that Jakura Ventures is doing which is giving them a higher An score? And you answered it. You said they are separation. doing waste separation. Right. Yes, indeed. On my part, this is the way we have to go. Ultimately. We need to separate the waste right at the source right. where the waste is being generated. What is it made up of? Mm. So we have to study the entire waste stream, make sure that we separate the waste, organics, inorganics. you have the plastics, right. and perhaps others, yes. so that we can recover the waste as much as possible and have very limited amount of waste going into the landfill. Mm. So, uh, Doc, so now you've, you've given us an idea of the overview, the waste, what type of waste, what is to be separated. Right. And um, we, we were all very excited, I'm sure, including you, about the Accra being the cleanest city. Because you get to some plates and you virtually can't breathe. Yes. You know, so what about the waste we can't see? Sewage. That's one of the big ones. You haven't said anything about uh, sewage. Mm. Yeah. So once you are there, can you also now talk about these calls we are hearing that the cleanest city might not happen before the next elections? Which is what <laughs> we thought the president said, that it will happen in the first four years. Yes. That, no, he emphatically, we can yes. actually quote him. Yes. First four years that he's in office. So why are we hearing calls that, you know, that two might years not, down the two line. years down the line? We still have two years, yes. at least in the first uh, term. Um. So why are we hearing these calls? What's the challenge with the waste? Certainly, um, we have come to terms with the enormity of the challenge that we are facing. So looking at our preparedness to deal with the situation, mm. I'm not surprised that we, uh, we seem to be giving ourselves much longer um, you know, time period to deal with the waste. But even with this, mm. if we don't apply ourselves seriously and address the problem as required, I don't think we'll get to achieve you know, the vision that the What would, in your estimation, would be a about. serious application? Is it money? Mm -hmm. Is it the money? Is it capacity? Enforcement. Yes, <laughs> enforcement. What, when you say <laughs> you don't apply ourselves, yeah, usually, what would be a serious application? Usually, yeah. we are tempted to think that it is money that does everything. Yeah. But I am of a slightly different opinion. 
there is something about Ghanaians. You see, the drive to work to achieve results, mm. even with the limited resources, resources at your disposal, for me, that is the most important thing. Yeah. Are we applying ourselves seriously enough? Mm, not enough, in my opinion. As well. The municipal assemblies, what are they doing? If you go to the, and I'm tempted to talk about our markets, mm. if we are not careful, the current generation and the middle income group keeps expanding and growing. Hmm. Nobody would want to go to, for example, the domain market. market. Yes. The reason being that when it is not raining, the place is dusty. Mm -hmm. If it rains, the place is muddy. muddy. You are not going to walk through the mud to go and buy. You would rather go to the shopping malls. Sooner or later, they will start selling the very items that are being sold at the ordinary market. Are we trying to create model markets? Mm. And you can create model markets only when you put in place appropriate waste management systems. Systems in place. Yes. Is this not to say that the case of dummy market, it means there are no uh, waste bins, there is no proper schedule for waste collection, because as much as it is attitu attitudinal behavior that needs to be changed, the people must have a place to put in the rubbish and there must be someone dedicated to come collect it as well. If, if we go to the model cities we are trying to achieve, Emulate. we are trying to attain mm. to, they have these systems in place. There is a bin every three, four hundred meters for paper, for plastic, and the three of them are next to each other. You have one for, and it's color coded. We need to implement this first in the common streets, in our mm. main streets, so that people have, from children, they have the attitude of drop the paper into paper, drop the plastic there, and drop the metal or glass into that. And then you'd have the waste management companies coming to collect it, either, either it's every day or twice a day. Well, we have a situation where people clean up and leave the heaps of what they have cleaned right there by the side of the street, only to have it. We have open drains. Mm -hmm. In this 2019, mm -hmm. we do have open drains, and we can't deny that fact. So a little rain or wind or whatever, it goes right back into the drain. And this is where our monitoring and evaluation systems are also lacking. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot more to be done from the uh, authorities' angle. And then we go on to the people. Like you mentioned, resources, having all that money is a second step. But we need to start with the daily practice of making a good change, in my opinion. You'll be surprised though, Eliza. Sorry not to cut you, but they right. probably, uh, once, you see, once you start looking into these things, you realize that, you know, there are measures, there are policies. These yes. things exist. They exist, but they're not being implemented. Right. So the I bylaws. think, yeah, I think I believe that it should more be a call for personal effort. People should be Absolutely. interested in keeping the environment, the environment clean. clean. I think it's more yeah. of a personal effort. Now, if I may ask, Two years down the line, after the first call for this um, sanitation, everyday sanitation day and so on and so forth, is there anything, you know, that we can refer to in the city to say that, okay, we can touch this and say that government has actually done something about sanitation? Like you said, we're still constructing roads with open drains everywhere and so on and so forth. Is there any indication whatsoever, anything at all that, you know, people living in this city can look around and say, oh, you know, an aha moment, you know, for even one person. <laughs> it will be difficult for me to really put my <laughs> finger on something really concrete in terms of improvement in hmm. our surroundings, what we see in our neighborhoods. But barely two, three weeks ago, hmm. um, the integrated is it waste management recycling plant? Um, plant. Yes. yes. Yeah, was commissioned at uh, Agobloshi. That was great yeah, news. Yeah. Mm. It looks very nice. From which yeah. is, Outside. you know, which is meant to um, sort out. Do the sorting. Yeah, do the sorting. Organic, inorganic. Um, so it's a waste collection get, point. No, get oh. the recyclables Disposal out. Point, I guess. And okay. we use the um, organics are going to be turned into into Manio compost, and so, you know, and so on and so forth. That is 
something concrete and it's quite a huge a huge a huge project which um, expectedly should um, help solve you know the situation at um, what about what about the marshals were they ever commissioned you if know that every day is a sanitation there's supposed yeah. to be marshals yes. deputy marshals like every summer, every summer. ministry is supposed yes. to yeah. appoint people and the president said he was personally going to make sure that those people work together with the uh, minister mm. for monitoring and evaluation then we're supposed to have these big sweepers, you mm -hmm. know, the, mm -hmm. the, the sweepers. That, right. yeah. But just last Rushes. week, they deployed uh, uh, human sweepers. Mm -hmm. Last week, I think Zoom 9 deployed well, human sweepers. And they so leave the little heaps of sand on the yes. Yeah, we haven't seen the, you know, the, 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 the <laughs> right. sweepers. So yes. all that is really not, that's why I say we can't see. Okay. Monitoring, sorry. Mm. Monitoring is good. Mm. Enforcement is it's key. It's also extremely important. Mm. Yeah. So that we sanction those who but do you I think the, the, the right marshals thing. were, do we have them? They I, 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 I don't remember anything. I think I it's the equivalent of Sama Sama, more than yes. Sama Sama. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I remember yeah, back in the, in the old days, less. we used to have the town council people. Okay. They used to call yes, them town cars or something like exactly. that, if you remember. Yes. No, they, they were back everywhere. Back. We need yes, back. I think they're they're everywhere. The, the, the little things, the big things that sometimes people see as the little things mm. became big, very big news recently. Yes. When the Minister for Sanitation advised the women not to marry men <laughs> who don't have toilets <laughs> and and <laughs> it's you no know, people are like it's it not funny look oh yes it, the toilet everybody knows the history of toilet in modern history mm -hmm. the toilet is one of the the most important places in a house yes. if you think i am joking <laughs> when you have diarrhea <laughs> and you are in the middle of makola market yes. i am telling you you will have a bowl yeah. go behind a stall and, and do, do your business, business. Yes. look it's, it's not it's not something to to, to laugh, laugh about, about. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very issue it's a very and sad situation. Yeah, and yeah. Like yeah. The sewage usually, from, usually from I think the about. Right. Look, <laughs> that's 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 usually, about usually, laugh usually about I think it. about <laughs> a situation where mm. you are in a trotter, for example. Oh yes. And there is huge traffic. And number two calls. You are under pressure. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Hmm. For some of us who are sitting in our own vehicles, hmm. it's your own vehicle. Yes. So anything can happen in there. Anything can <laughs> happen in there, and yes. when you go back home, and, and then or you, you can choose yeah. where to stop. But but yeah. but yeah. but so but but yourself. the situation of toilets. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very critical. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is it's very critical in mm. this and day and age. Yeah, no, because mm -hmm. I'm saying that because there's a, a direct relationship between sewage, you know, as as we would know it, yeah. and the the, the 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 toilet business. And the, the issue is, I think there's a, a policy about one household at least having one toilet, yes. yeah, which is Definitely. being, in, especially in uh, some of the inner city places where they have to do the big public mm. uh, toilets yeah. and all. So we, we wanted you to also share with us, you know, like how much waste, for instance, mm -hmm. will be impacted if we could have enough toilets to take care you know, do you have like the, the toilet people ratio kind of <laughs> figures? No, because it's, it's yes. a very important thing. And I know sewage from toilets. I, is, can, is I can't really yeah. give you um, any figures. Mm -hmm. But if you visit the, um, the sewage plant down uh, Abubloshi, which mm -hmm. is fairly yeah. just on the beach, and look Lab at the number, the, the number of vehicles. Trucks coming in, it tells you the magnitude yeah. of yeah. the yeah. problem. Yeah, and I think Tema also and has one. Is there a yeah, recycling Tema. plant uh, back up? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. is there. That you also have one at, uh, is it Ajin Kotoku? Mm. Yeah. So those in the northern part of Accra also travel there. And all these are being managed by just one group, group of companies. So I think that is quite, quite laudable. Are quite a uh, few with private with people also least. involved in, uh, uh, you know, taking out waste. Yeah, and there is homes. one also on Legon campus, All right. uh, which is supposed to take care of uh, Medina areas. Mm. There's, and of there's a, a very funny um, sign on uh, some of the roads in Accra, East Legon on the N1, that says Toilet Pula. Yes, for yes. Yes. number. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know for who sewage. that is. But, but I remember all these sewage. are very good, you know, the, the, mm. the liquid waste is also a very good resource. Yes, yes, yes. yes. When it comes to um, tapping mm. gas, yes. you know, biogas yes. from it. Mm. So we can also explore this area. Mm. But the quality of the toilet, if I say quality, um, for we some know. reasons, mm. yeah. because everything has to be fresh, 
to yeah. be able to generate that um, yeah, I, I oh, think okay. we need new city plan where we can have a central yeah. sewage system going that there. Be and swell. then once it's collected exactly. at one point, then the yeah. biogas would yeah. can then be tapped back to the homes as and gas then to use cook with. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Ofori, yes. thank you very much on coming on Captured by Women. Mm. Thank, thank you, you too. It's a We've been discussing the sanitation situation in Accra with Dr. Benjamin Dencho Ofori. Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, University of Ghana, Legon. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back from the break, viewers. This is Captured by Women. My name is Nancy Fukania, and we're continuing the conversation. I hope you're having a lovely time. Um, we are just moving on to the ghost of one of the most famous names, I think, making the rounds in the news nowadays, Aisha Huang, a Chinese national who was involved in the mining business in this country and has recently been deported from Ghana. Um, we have with us Major Mohammed Bobobri, retired. Did I get the name right? Yes, you're right. Okay, he's a former head of security at the Bogoso Mines and has met this lady face in face. Um, I hear she's also popularly known as the Galamsi Queen and other names. Um, Major, you are welcome Thank to you. Captured by Women. Um, first of all, I'd like to know, should the minister who made certain comments recently, uh, minister, senior minister um, Yao Safumafo, who made certain comments in the United States recently uh, about this lady's deportation, um, should the minister be understood to mean that all the criminal cases uh, which would not you know, cause economic problems for Ghana be discontinued? Because apparently um, she was involved in some criminal activity and um, she was allegedly, um, you know, incarcerated for some time and she's now been deported. So uh, is the minister trying to tell us that everyone that commits a crime and is a foreign national, and if this crime doesn't affect the economic stability or the development of this country, it should be forgotten or be discontinued? Is that what this means? Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. I don't think so. The issue involved as uh, Aisha is that Aisha is a, 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 a lady like any of us who wanted to make a living. So he came to Ghana, and in due course, she found that uh, the Chinese who were coming to Ghana were having problems of uh, language. So she became an interpreter or a liaison officer between the Ghanaians and the Chinese. So they went to small scale mining. In fact, I won't say they went to. Our brothers and sisters went to China and brought these uh, Chinese and lead them into small scale mining. So what was defined was that the Chinese were actually providing support services. Hmm. The law allows them to provide the support services, meaning that they, they have their excavators. They will pay the excavators or equipment, let me use that word. Our Ghanaian brothers and sisters could not do that. But I would like to, to say something before we go ahead. Small scale mining was actually passed in 1989, mm. PNDC law 218. It actually meant for, see, in, in economies, I think we had the, the, the definition of small scale wrong. That is why we're having a problem. Mm. In economies, small scale mining means that. Uh, you're using your hands or ma manual, manual, I mean, small. It's hand, hand to math. Surface mining. Surface mining. With rudimentary equipment. Uh, rudimentary so equipment. At that period that they passed the law, there was no surface mining. Mm -hmm. It was only all the mining companies were doing underground mining. Deep shaft. Deep yeah. shaft. Precium, Precium, mm. and Oboise. The major mining companies, last game, they were doing underground mining. Mm. There was no surface mining. It was in, I think, 1992 that my company, Bogoso Gold, mm. we started surface mining in Ghana. Mm. So the surface mining was actually done by our local people, uh, that we called Galamasi. They gather and sell. So I thought they were doing it. So in 2006, the then government 
sent some 200 Ghanaians mm. to China to go and train how to do uh, I think the aim of the government at that day was that they want to help the Ghanaians to do better mining. Which is surface mining? Surface mining. Okay. So they sent these Ghanaians to 200 of them to China. So they went and learned. And mm. they made friends with the Chinese. Mm. Business uh, uh, partners. Right. So they came along with their business partners. But the error, I want, I was, I want to make it clear, the government or that they made a big error. Mm. The, like I said, PNDC law uh, uh, 1989 was most good mining meant for uh, manual, uh, what you call it, uh, hand, hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. That what they call artisanal mining. Fact, to, to, artisanal let's let's mining. use the word artisanal, we confuse artisanal mining. This is the, the word. Mm. And by the law, you're giving only five acres. And you and your wife may take maybe 20 years to exploit with your hand. Mm -hmm. So environmental destruction was minimized. minimized. Then if you're a group of people, 10 people, mm. you will give me 25 acres. And mm. like I indicated, they don't destroy the environment so much like using sophisticated equipment. Mm. And the law did not allow you to use sophisticated equipment or some amount of money. Then came this uh, 2006. What would I have thought that, let me use the word, the sensible thing we should have done at that time with Ghana, I want to put that way. We should have passed a, a law for medium scale mining. Mm. If we are doing economies. Large scale means that you, you mechanize, mechanize right. uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, mining. Yes. Small scale means that it hand to, uh, what do you call it, use your hands, I mean manual. So unfortunately, our Ghanaian brothers and sisters who went to China brought these Chinese and they came they with uh, excavators, Chinese machines. Mm. In fact, the one small scale miner or mm. one of our Ghanaian, some of the experts uh, do not belong to them yes. because they came with the Chinese. One a, a small scale man had more than 100 excavated sites. Wow. That's quite the history lesson, I think. Me, meanwhile, <laughs> when you compare wow. to the, the whole Ghana Chamber of Mines, yes. they don't have uh, up to 30 excavated sites. Okay, so Major Retard, let me just get this right. So, what you are saying is that from this history and the context, yes. it means that Aisha Wang should not have been in possession of a mining concession Cons or a line license. license. So, how do you think she came by a mining license yes. to operate? And uh, where is it? Bipo Tenting? Bipo Tenting, yes. yes. Uh, how, did uh, she, uh, how, uh, how did she get this? Did she the, have the, a license? No, she she, 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 she a That's the point. Good. She had licenses through a local partner. Mm -hmm. Which I think the, the law allow partnership in terms of she providing services, support services, yes, but not, not doing the mining or in the concession. But you know, you see, uh, we, we, uh, Ghana, we are finding way of doing things. Middlemen, mm. they go and bring, if you go to commerce and other areas, you see the Chinese selling tomatoes or other things. Meanwhile, they are not, uh, uh, what do you, uh, foreigners are not allowed to do minor trading. minor trading. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so in Aisha's case, your belief is that she had the concession through a partner. Through a partner. But she worked in a way that seemed as if she owned the, the license. license because she was quite powerful yeah. in, the, in the communities in which she operated. Mm -hmm. So in the case when she was arrested, where were these partners? Where, where were the partners that she worked with at the, at the mining concession? That is where we have a problem. Like I indicated, is the Ghanaians actually had was in China, he never knew where uh, Wasa Koropong was. It's Ghana who brought it to Wasa Koropong, uh -huh. or Dunkwa, or uh, Prince and the rest. And anytime they arrest them, we don't hear uh, what they call it, uh, accomplices. And that, that, that's what it should be. Who, who gave you the lances? If you go to Mina Commission, Mina Commission say they didn't give the lances. No. The, yeah. And then they are possessing lances. Yes. When I say they possess, they, they have it from their partners. Yes. So many commercials have collected these uh, uh, lances from them, trace the names of the partners, or maybe they were fictitious uh, names. Uh, uh, what do you call lances? Let me put anyway, that. Anyway, Major, you you have met this woman in person. Yes. Could you could you just give us a brief idea? What is she like? What's the aura around her? Mm. Why were so many people claimed to be afraid of her? Why is that the case? Well, uh, fact, I shall let me put it this way. When uh, my company 
we had a policy where our MD told her that we should have empathy for people. Mm. They put your feet in the other man's shoe and see what is the problem. So we encountered with Aisha at Mampong, near Dunkwa, one of our concessions, with excavators and other Chinese people. So we had a policy that, look, give them warning. But it's part of the minimum force. Mm. Warn them first to leave the place. So we, we warned them to vacate the place, and they accepted it. He came with a Ghanaian counterpart. I thought this one man, sir. Hmm. He was with one of these company uh, airlines, what they, what, what, which uh, had a problem. Hmm. Uh, so when we invited them to the office for discussion, my general manager educated them. Hmm. And the man said he was surprised that the Ghanaian counterparts deceived them, that the concession belonged to them. So they apologized. Asha and Co apologized. Mm. Before my GM, that they are sorry, they are going to remove their machines. So I could say that she's a sober person. Okay. In that manner, maybe on that day. Mm. But you know, with time, when people are exposed to certain conditions, mm. they become so important and powerful. Mm. So I'm sure with time, like I indicated, he was a liaison officer and an interpreter between uh, the Ghanaian community and the Chinese. Mm. And she built that sort of importance out of it. Like any individual, when you're given the opportunity, mm. you want to show your importance. And that's how it came out that Asha became so powerful because he assisted with the security people mm. who yeah. could not understand Chinese. If I may, recent reports in the media have proven a lot of damning evidence against Aisha mm. and implicated so many officials who were compromised in the process, both in video documentary evidence, in sex scams, <laughs> yeah. money changing hands. Why with all this evidence was she deported so hurriedly? Is it because she was an official interpreter being used by the Ghana Immigration Service mm -hmm. on some occasions? Why was the case discontinued and why was she deported? There's this other Chinese lady in Tanzania, there's a Ivory Queen. Yes. Even though China was gave Tanzania so much funds, she's in prison today yeah. because she was found guilty. With her accomplices. And with her accomplices. And yeah. we have all this evidence against Aisha Wang. I think she should be repatriated back into the country and Tried. face trial. Right. The people of Ghana deserve this. What is your opinion yeah. on this? Why was she deported? Okay, you see, there are complications about Asha's issue. Asha, per se, was not arrested in the concession area. Mm. Like I said, she was just a, a, an ordinary person who tried to make a living. Mm -hmm. So she was, she was providing support services. And through that services, she became an owner of the business, mm. business owner. And that's how she, she claims she's the concession owner. Mm. From my knowledge, Asha was arrested in a house, in a residence, by immigration people. And that, that is oh, immigration offense. Because immigration cannot ar arrest them for a criminal offense. They arrested for immigration offenses. Okay. Ah. For uh, overstaying, overstaying and so on. Okay. And then uh, using his uh, visa, the visa did not allow him to do so working she didn't have permit, a visa. permit. Yes. Good. Then the police later follow up and then lay down some charges against Asha. Mm. But when you look at the charges, the police laid What were the charges? The uh, uh, conducting Ill uh, illegal mine, uh, small scale mining without lances. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so, uh, providing support services without a permit from Mineral Commission. Mm. Okay. And then employing foreigners in small scale mining. Because foreigners were not allowed to, because she used to. Bring them in. Recruit or lead mm. Chinese to into the business. And some of these Chinese they brought in were convicts from China. That wow. Mm. And then they leave them oh right. into this environment. Area. Yes. yes. Mm. We're just rounding up now Good. on this issue. And um, I, you, you've, we, we are aware that you are happy that she's been deported. Why are you happy? No, the, the issue is that, you know, like I said, the, the charges that were laid against were weak. Mm. In fact, if you had a good lawyer, you would have been safe because it, the, the law was obsolete. Very well. 2006. Hmm. In 2015, the NDC government passed a new law, uh, Section 99.1. Wow. 2015. That has, uh, I mean, punishment behavior.
Because the earlier law, the maximum penalty was 300 Ghana cities. You know, there was no imprisonment. <laughs> you so, don't so, have so, your so, facts so, right. So, so, so all that comes down to Asha was that Asha is 300 Ghana cities. Slap all the right, blast. Major. And we thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, we will be wrapping up this session. Um, we've had Major Mohamed Bobovri retired, who was the former head of security at the Bogosu Mines, um, discussing with us this issue of the famous Aisha Huang, who has been deported from this country. We will be right back. This is Captured by Women. Our beautiful costume was brought to you by courtesy of Timache, located in East Legon, and fabric donated by GTP, our wonderful outfits. <laughs> Join us again next week, same time on Captured by Women.